welcome back. Part two, we are firing up and gonna do some real runtime on this 13 liter, 780 cubic inch high compression engine put into this little bush plane scrappy. So we're gonna get into a little more meat and potatoes, talk about the first start, what we're watching for, the steps of putting up more and more power, changing the prop, all kinds of fun stuff. Let's get this party started and get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. One of the things I really need to pay attention on, and a lot of things I have to think about when I first start up an engine, this engine has been sitting for over a year now. So right when I start it, Normally you go right for oil pressure. The first thing I'm gonna listen for is any kind of valve ticking. Maybe I've got a stuck valve, something that's rusted or seated, and I'm gonna to wanna to chop it right away. If I don't hear that right off the bat, at the same time I'm looking for oil pressure to come up like any startup. And then obviously if there's any misfire or anything else. Um, I think the timing's all lined up right, so I shouldn't have a problem there. But as I go through it, I'm gonna go right for the sound, oil pressure simultaneously, and then I'm gonna check the, the basic things that wouldn't hurt us if it was on, like the fuel pressure. Make sure that that calibration looks right. I set it up right. I programmed it in the Garmin right. I know what fuel pressure it should be. And as long as it's in line and in the color, I'll feel really good about that. But the first time you fire up, uh, I like to call people over. So I'm gonna have all my friends there because I want people on all sides in case there's something really bad, like a leaky fuel injector, or a fuel line that for whatever reason during our double check process, we didn't tighten it. Um, the last thing we need is a fire and that is pretty common on first startups, not pretty common. It's rare, but it happens more often than you would actually think. So I definitely have fire extinguishers standing by. I have safety people on both sides. Before I even start it up, um, I'm still gonna yell clear prop because we always do and it's a habit, but typically if I'm getting ready to start up, I have people going all the way around before I even turn the key or yell clear prop, I've had everyone check all the way around, make sure no one's there, and then out of habit, I'll yell clear, yell clear prop and start it. So after we got it started up, Everything sounded good. I couldn't hear any valves or any ticking that would bother me. There was a ticking noise. It was clearly an exhaust leak. But just to be sure, I wanted to double check it. We shut it down, went back out, looked around. And, and I anticipated an exhaust leak because during the first run-ups, I was using the temporary exhaust that wasn't finished. And I just reused the same gaskets on the headers. Now, Sometimes you can do that, but the gaskets I had, I like to use, have a ring inside that gets compressed. And if you take them off and they don't end up on the same one, quite frankly, once you take them off, they're, they're done. But I didn't want to throw away a whole new set when I knew it was temporary exhaust and made a run. So we did have a tiny exhaust leak. If you hear a little tick, 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 it's a little puff of exhaust right out of a couple of the gaskets, but um, everything went great. here what we're doing is we're just doing different rpms different power settings checking to see how much torque is on the strain gauge see how much pull we're getting and this is just a, a very steady slow not rush process it's really fun it takes a while but it's just it's relaxing it just feels so good to be at this part of the build and get to just sit and have the engine run and watch everything watch the temperatures uh, it is currently right now Every now and then I give a little gas, it's still puffing a little bit of white smoke. The white smoke is oil burning. If it were black smoke, it would be too rich. Since it is white smoke, I do know there's a lot of oil all over inside it from um, fogging the engine and pickling it. And so that's gonna happen for a while. 
If it doesn't go away after a good long run, a bunch of taxi runs, high power for lengthy periods of time, make sure everything seats in real good, then it's something I'll look into further. But right now, everything is on par and I couldn't be happier with it. All right, so I'm doing something I've never done before, and that is I'm trying out uh, a new set of exhaust. Now, this set of exhaust came off my race plane. We built these ourselves, just formed them and made them right on the airplane. Back when I built it, we made our own exhaust. But I've been hearing great things from some friends out there that are using experimental aircraft exhaust systems. And uh, so I called them up and thought, you know what, I'm gonna give them a shot and see what I think. So this is a trial for me to actually have someone else build my exhaust for me. I'm kind of excited about it. So what we're gonna do is they made these custom ends that will go through and we can bolt them on the aircraft. And then they give you a whole bunch, just a kit of basically every kind of bend and elbow and you just glue and screw PVC pipe to this that's bolted to the engine, feed it down into a collector that's reduced down to a size that the PVC two inch pipe will fit on. And then you can carry off the other end with a smaller pipe and make your entire exhaust system. So I'm excited about it. It's like a arts and crafts time building exhaust. Ralph, are you eating your paste? No, my over. Right now I went ahead and put these on and I test run the engine. I could just use these and I may still use this front section. We'll see, I'm gonna start building a set of pipes out of PVC that are gonna go down and out the back, something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna glue a bunch of pipe together, screw them together, build a set of exhaust and see how they can do making me a set. All right guys, so this is really awesome. These all look familiar because these crazy bends and double backs are all things I made years ago, but They've gone through and cut out and inserted this joint. And this allows the pipe to have a little bit of movement. Once you get a lot of expansion and contraction, these pipes grow a lot. And there is a slip right here. They slide into each other and they have room to move a little. But when this is moving at this end, we're not worried about this breaking or cracking. And this is hanging from the engine and also has movement. So this end typically isn't cracking. This end, as it expands and contracts, tends to bend this bar back and forth just a slight amount for years, and you get a little break right up in this area right here is really common. We're actually, I'm gonna weld one up today for a friend, and, uh, and this joint right here allows these two to move independently of each other, stay completely connected. So I have never used these before, but I've always wanted to, and uh, I've heard great things about it. So, experimental aircraft exhaust, thank you guys. I am really happy with how this has turned out. There's a couple things I'm noticing right off the bat, just talking to you. Um, my connection bolt points for the, the adjustment where these slide in and out, they have put a, a secondary plate over the exhaust pipe and then welded to it. This is a common area of break. And uh, I love that they went through and did this um, added layer of protection mats on every single part. You see that right there. So um, I can't wait to slide this all together. It looks amazing. So we'll see how it fits. Let's get back to work. Last one. As you start the engine, obviously your exhaust gets really hot. The expansion rate is unbelievable with the heat. So your exhaust, as they collect, that grows to the back. The next place you see a lot of times exhaust crack is when they try and mount the back of the exhaust too tight. Um, they've got to put a hanger on it. And in fear of that hanger being too tight, a lot of times they do the opposite. If it's too tight and the exhaust can't move, then you'll get a crack. If you don't do it tight enough and the exhaust is hanging under there and swinging side to side, which you see even on certified aircraft, 
um, with way too much movement, then you get a crack from fatigue uh, movement, from vibration of the exhaust moving. So I'm doing something a little different. I just made these simple little brackets uh, out of stainless steel plate, bent them up, and then you can see I've got these little bolt patterns here. This is going to go right at the front of the aircraft, and I'm going to put a little hole on the flange that the cowling goes and hooks to, and this little tab is going to pass through the bottom of the plane, and it can move side to side like this. As the exhaust expands and contracts, this thing can swing because the exhaust will literally move that far um, from full hot to full cold. So what I'm going to be able to do is snug this bolt down, this passes through, and then this hooks to the exhaust so I can snug this to it, put this on the pipe, and then as the exhaust grows and shrinks, it can pivot like this, and I get all the correct movement, no swinging, and I should eliminate any exhaust crack. So between the pivot balls at the header and this at the back is my hanger. We'll see if that prevents future problems. So all right, guys, I just finished it, finished tightening up the exhaust. Everything is locked on. I got the, all the EGT probes in. Um, the isolators are done. My little pivot brackets back here are on. They're connected with this extremely flexible um, part right here. This allows the, when the engine starts up, there's a lot of movement on startup or even in flight vibration. That will allow the side to side movement. And then the pivot at the back is for the expansion rate of the exhaust, which expands this way, which will push this pipe to the back. I'm really happy with how the exhaust turned out. I've got my cross tie bar under here that passes and connects both sides of the exhaust. That prevents movement side to side like this and just uh, keeps the exhaust, these four pipes helping these four pipes stay together and it minimizes the chance of cracking. So um, anyway, I'm pumped. Uh, the guys who did this experimental aircraft exhaust, they took the headers I made years ago and they finished connecting these ends and putting on these joints. Um, they did an amazing job. I think next time, rather than building my own exhaust system, I'm gonna give them a try on a complete set from start to finish, because their welds are absolutely spot on. They did amazing work, so quick shout out to those guys. Thank you for doing such a great job for me. You saved me um, a, probably a couple of days of work just um, tying in my old exhaust with how I wanted to finish it. You guys did awesome, so thank you. I think this thing's getting really close. A little more button ups and we're gonna fire it up. Let's get to work. Hey guys, I'm super excited about how the second day of engine run testing is gone. I got some great footage I'm gonna show you in just a second. But right off the bat, the oil system, the oil cooling right here, I could not be happier. We took it and we idled it and it got almost to 102 degrees outside air temperature, really warm for this time of year, record actually. And we pushed the temp up and we just let it idle for over 20 minutes. I got up against the Vermatherm, 188, 190 degrees, never moved. I pushed the power up more and more and more. I got to um, half throttle and that temp stayed dead on. So Mark came over and he put his hand back here. Air's coming in here and right here, he could just feel the heat being sucked out of this grill. And I never got it off the Vermatherm. So if I can do that 100 degree day, tie down a ramp, I couldn't be happier. The other thing that was something you always wonder that went really well is I did a couple of high power bursts down the runway, the taxiway, kind of checking things out. Now, the first question you're asked, did I go to full power? No, I'm still baby stepping, we're gonna get there. But I did push it up, I'm gonna show you those clips right now. And the plane is tracking dead straight and I have a ton of rudder left. Even when I kind of bump it and spurt, it just goes and it's tracking. So I couldn't be happier with the ground stability and control right now. Um, I got a lot more testing to do, more power to throw at it. Right now, before I go full power, uh, I'm gonna pull off the head lockers, um, inspect it. One of the things I did do when I put the new exhaust system on, I got the new gaskets on instead of reusing the old ones. The little ticking I had a little while ago um, that I thought was the exhaust because I was reusing gaskets on an old set of headers, um, it went away completely. So that was great news to have. 
Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my head lockers off just for a visual inspection. Check the valves, lifters, rockers. Go ahead at the same time, I'm gonna replace all the O-rings. Uh, the one I designed my head lockers, I made it so the O-rings could simply be pulled out, a rope insert put in. They've been in there for years and years, never leaked a drop of oil out of them. It's tight as a drum, but it's been a long time. I'm gonna open that up, spect it, new O-rings, close it up, and at that point, I'll feel ready to go ahead and push all the horsepower out of it. So we got more to come. I'm gonna show you these videos, and then you guys know the drill. Let's get back to work.